Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolives at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 and this next match is going to be between Capricious and Failthos on Akalin Wastelands, which we've seen a few times. If that sounds familiar to you, you have been watching this show, because I think I have done two of these. It seems like Capricious and Failthos really want to figure out this map, figure out the gunship matchup, or figure out how powerful they are. Looks like Capricious is going for Cloakies, though, which is curious. I mean, this map is... I believe it's a StarCraft, it is a StarCraft 2 map, and converted for Evolution RTS, actually, and then ported into 0K, which is why it's so big. Like, Evolution RTS, basically everything moves about two or three times faster than 0K, and is also about twice as large. So maps tend to be, like, 16 by 16 in Evolution RTS is roughly equivalent to, I think, 10 by 10 in, in 0K. Like, it's a medium-sized map for Revo RTS, but it's a giant map for 0K. So that's why this map is very large and very sparse, which tends to encourage a lot of airplay, because then the air units can be built up, especially gunships nowadays. But before it was even planes, it's just that ravens became a lot less powerful, so you couldn't comp you can't comp snipe anymore, so it becomes less useful to do that. But gunships, on the other hand, you can just set up banshees and rap rapiers and go for it. So Failthos right now is setting up a few banshees. Capricious, on the other hand, going for Cloakybot and going for the Glaives with the Cloaky Bot, which is an interesting choice. I mean, they are going to be using them for the speed. Glaives are very fast, and this map being large, favors speed. However, Failthos being very clever, normally you'd start up on this plateau as Capricious has done, but Failthos instead starting out below the plateau, meaning that Capricious can't very easily figure out where they are. I mean, Capricious will figure it out within the next few seconds, but the point is, Failthos bought a little bit of extra time. And that extra time is going to be enough for the Banshees to get in. That's the difference between getting the Gremlins up before or after they're needed. And this is going to mean the Gremlins... Like, Capricious just checking all along the plateau. Actually, Felthos bought themselves a lot of time. Capricious finally realizing something is up, going down to this lower expansion here. And we'll be able to find Felthos set up. But at this point, Felthos has already got their Banshees in place. So, Capricious, what do they have? Conjurers. And some Defenders. And more Conjurers. There's no... There's no gremlins. There's no... Well, okay, razors would be a little bit wrong for this situation, but still, there's nothing. There is absolutely nothing here to deal with banshees. The defenders do not deal with banshees. They go down very rapidly. And at this point, Felthos has, has revealed it. There's nothing stopping this right now. Capricious, they're going for the... No, they're going for more conjurers. They're continuing to go for conjurers. Felthos going for cranes because Felthos... I mean, they have the opening, but they figure... Capricious might stop this, so getting the cranes for the long game. And that's not a great... It's not a terrible idea. I mean, Felthos does have to deal with these glaives coming in. But the thing is, this is going to mean Felthos will have a much easier time just setting up in case this all goes wrong. That's always the thing you want to do. That's one of the reasons why in the recent game... as the recent game I did on... Doom... What was it called? Doom Patrol, which was a cheese game. And I mentioned there that it's rare that cheese fails in 0k, and one of the big reasons why is because usually when you set up cheese, you also have construction going on as well. Gremlins? Okay, Gremlins coming in, doing a bit of damage here. Really providing a lot of problems to the Banshees, surprisingly. I think it's more the Banshees' movement AI that's stopping the Banshees from killing the Gremlins than anything else. But anyway, yeah, so the reason I point that out is because 0k doesn't really require a huge amount of commitment into construction. And your buildings, I mean, you have that, you have your economy that runs itself. Metal extractors don't require any workers or anything to run them. So you're not spending a lot more money than you are just on the metal extractor to get resources. And you don't have to invest a lot into expansion. So it's a lot easier to set yourself up in a bit of a robust way, even if you're going for an aggressive early strategy. Now, that doesn't mean that going for an aggressive early strategy is free. It just means that going for an aggressive early strategy isn't suicide. Or isn't this poker thing. Like, you can do it and still have a bit of a robust setup, which means, of course, that both players can do it. Both players can both be aggressive and defend against the aggression and still have the economy to continue into the mid-game without having to sacrifice one or the other too much. And it looks like Capricious has managed to push away Failthos for now, but Failthos, they're actually behind. Slightly. No, no, that's Reclaim. Yeah, Failthos is ahead economically. That makes more sense. And yeah, Failthos, they're going to have a much easier time thanks to this crane I'm curious to see how the Bumblebee works. The gunship factory is going to be getting a new constructor, the Bumblebee, which I believe is 
7.5 metal per second, but load slower and a bit more. It's 300 metal rather than 220. And I believe about two thirds as fast. Maybe even half as fast. That's the biggest thing is the speed. Because gunships can basically dominate everything in large part because cranes are so fast they can expand wherever they like. Even with a four build power, it's not terrible. It's very viable. It's very valid to go around using that. And fail thought setting up their economy way stronger than Capricious's would be. Even if Capricious hadn't been attacked. Like, just on its own. Capricious can't really expand too easily. And Capricious is expanding constantly, too. It's just, at this point, Capricious, with the Gremlins being relatively slow anti-air, having a hard time dealing with the Banshees. I'm slightly surprised Capricious hasn't built any Stardusts. Admittedly, on a map like this, that's almost impossible. Like, build one around the Clokebot factory, maybe. But the Metal Extractors are basically dead. Like, Lotuses would help a bit, but not much. Like, that's the thing. It's really hard to deal with Banshees on a large map like this. Because they move quickly. They fire quickly. The problem is they don't have high alpha, but they have high enough health and in groups deal enough damage overall that Razors don't do a lot of good. Lotuses do some good. But even then, we're going to find out right now just how much good they do, which isn't a huge amount on their own. Like, they're not terrible, and a group of them is quite scary for a group of Banshees. But one or two, not enough. Like, Stardusts, those are your defenses, but they're expensive. I mean, compared to a Lotus, they're about one and a half, no, two and a half times as expensive as a Lotus. And Capricious realizing there's not much they can do, throws in the towel. But yeah, it's just Banshees, you know? They're tough to deal with for Clokybot. There was actually a discussion in the game thread about how you deal with them. I was a bit curious how the game went, and wow, that went hard. Now, a big part of it was that Felthos did mind game out Capricious by starting here. Like, this start is extremely atypical. And what I kind of want to see is if there was a game played afterwards where Felthos either tried the same thing or maybe Capricious thought Felthos would try the same thing and checked here. However, the really risky thing about this, and why I think it only works once, is that once this has happened, once someone knows, okay, this is a thing that could happen, you're just going to send your scout here first. Maybe you send your scout down, or maybe you'll start down here to make it less obvious, but you're going to send your scout here first because if you look at the way the map is laid out, Felthos basically has their opening expansion right here, which is right next to the ramp. So a glaive could run in here and move up, and that would cost them three or four seconds. But going up in the plateau and finding nothing cost about 20 or 30 seconds, which was a massive amount of time. That was enough time for the Banshees to get across before anything could be done to help deal with them. Whereas if that had been scouted at first and was not there, if it was up in the plateau, that would waste five seconds at most, which is nowhere near as bad. So that's the thing, is that this is kind of risky for no other reason than it's a much easier place to scout than the plateau. It's just so unusual that you wouldn't think to scout it first. Because if it's on the plateau, why waste those five seconds? But if it's not in the plateau, then that's a large amount of time that's wasted. So I think that we might see Capricious and possibly other players start to scout here first before scouting on the high ground. Although I feel like Failthos and Capricious are the only people to play this map anymore. Maybe I'm wrong, but it just I see so many games between the two of them. I don't know how many people actually play this map apart from that, but either way, that was that was not entirely surprising. Banshees are scary. Banshees are really bloody scary. I feel like Vandals would have done better, though. If you're going to go for a bot factory when you need anti-air, Archangels work okay, but they have the same problem as Gremlins, that it's like, there's if they're out of range, you're kind of screwed. Vandals, at least it's homing. So it goes a little bit outside of their range if it has to. And I think Vandals also have a larger range than Gremlins. I'd have to double check that, but I feel like Vandals are really long range. Whereas Gremlins, I feel like they rely entirely on being cloaked, which does mean that... Oh yeah, the range of 700 Elmo actually might, might be about the same. But yeah, the advantage of Gremlins is that they're cloaked, so they can just pop up under the Banshees and kill them right away. The downside is that you have to know where the Banshees are going to be, and Banshees are super fast. So they can't avoid the gremlins, but as soon as the gremlins pop out, unless you have like a dozen gremlins and you're able to rip apart the banshees trivially, because that's 860 health. What do gremlins deal? 18.4 damage per shot. Banshees probably can get out of there within a couple seconds. So that's... Actually, can they? What's the banshee? What do you do? Banshee speed. Yeah, they can get out of there in three seconds. So within three seconds, that's about... What's the DPS on this? 61. So that's 180 health per gremlin on one banshee. 
For 860, like that's five gremlins per banshee to kill a banshee within the time it takes for it to exit gremlin range. And once they know what the gremlins are, they'll just go elsewhere. So that's the thing. Unless you can kill the banshees right away, that's the hard part. It hit and run, sure, but it's not that. It doesn't. I don't think math, the math works out for it to be very effective. Anyhow, that's that's that match. Next match is probably going to be a bit more even and definitely a lot less gunship focused. Going to be Helvor and Dianfriend on Avalanche. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.